And then there were two in a best of three showdown for the 2024 NCAA Division III baseball title. We bring you to Classic Park in East Lake, Ohio. This is the final between Misericordia and Wisconsin Whitewater game one in a best of three for all the marbles. Greetings everybody, Bob Brandon along with Bill Brophy and our crew here in Ohio. If you were expecting game one to be on Wednesday, well, we moved it up a few hours. Gonna play this on a Tuesday evening here in Ohio because Mother Nature may not cooperate on Wednesday. But nevertheless, the 18 field has been whittled down to just these Cougars and these Warhawks. Whitewater trying to win their third ever national championship on the baseball diamond and Misericordia looking for their first. The Warhawks batting card for Hall of Fame coach John Bodelinch will go like this. Aaron Holland, the talented freshman catcher to lead it off, followed by Matt Skolin, the All-American. Eli Frank is hitting third along with Adam Kootway in the cleanup spot. He's the designated hitter. Then Danny Hopper, Andy Thies, Sam Payton, who's been a hero here at this tournament, along with Dominic McVeigh, the center fielder, and Bennett Frazier, the shortstop, bats ninth. The Cougars take the field, and they will throw at the Warhawks tonight, the right-hander, Justin Calvarez. Well, Calvarez has made an appearance in this tournament twice before. Both these clubs got here by coming on the loser's bracket. It's the first time, only the, or excuse me, only the second time since this format was initiated in 2016 that both teams get on the loser's bracket to play in the championship series. Calvary's in the five games that Misericordia has played has pitched twice, thrown an inning in two-thirds here in Eastlake, allowed a run, walked two, and struck out one on the year. The senior has thrown 14 appearances. This is his second start. He's 3-1 and one with a 3.00 earned run average in 27 innings. Calvary's has allowed 22 hits. Nine earned runs. He's walked 16, struck out 40, and opponents have hit 210 against the lanky senior from Oaks, Pennsylvania. A matchup of two very different and distinctive baseball teams. Whitewater, one of the best offensive thunder lineups that you will find in all of Division Three in the nation. And then there's Misericordia, Bill. They play small ball. They like to have guys get on base and then try to hit you with their speed. Well, they, they both score a lot of runs. Whitewater averages 10 a game, Misericordia 8.2 runs a game. But you're right, they do it in different ways. Whitewater slammed 72 home runs at 346 as a team. Misericordia has only hit 27 home runs as a team. Other than cleanup hitter Connor Mareniak, who's got 13, nobody has more than four, but they steal a lot of bases. 155 bases, almost three a game. They get hit by a pitch almost three times a game. <laughs> so they make things happen. You'll see that as the night goes on. Two different styles. Should be fun. Whitewater can club it. Aaron Holland steps in. And first pitch in there for strike one from Calvaries. And we are underway. Because of the reconjiggered schedule, these two teams will both have the day off now tomorrow on Wednesday. And then Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern time, it'll be game two. If we need a winner take all game three, that'll follow shortly after to crown a new national champion because Lynchburg, who was here, was eliminated. Two and one to Holland. On a freshman catcher, a 328 hitter on the year with five homers, 34, 35 RBIs. He was uh, had the tie-breaking homer last night. Sprayed foul into the blue seats. Now Water had to win two games against Salve Regina yesterday to get here. They did so looks by scores of 5-2 and 7-4. Checked the swing, but not in time. Holland rung up, down on strikes, and there's one away. Let's set the defense for the Cougars of Misericordia. It's Cummins in left. Regane in center, McElhenney in right. Then Cordner, Marinac, Bunn, and San Filippo on the infield. Bollinger is the catcher for the righty Calvaries. Here's Matt Skolin, the left fielder. And this guy can hit. And he's shown it here in Eastlake. 
First team All-American, Matt Skolan. Came in with the gaudy numbers, and as Bill said, the, the resume, and just keeps on keeping on. Well, he's hitting 400 on the year. Here at Classic Park, he's 9 for 22 with two homers, eight RBIs. Little tapper foul. He's going on the year, has an OPS of 1241. That's pretty good. He slugs 749. Leads the team in RBIs with 72 and, with, and home runs with 17. Outside two and two. And since he's got here in Ohio, he's gone on to break a whole handful of Warhawk baseball records. Hits in a season, broken. Runs in a season, broke that. At bats in a season, broke that. He's got the potential to break the RBI mark. He's at 72, the record 73. I like his chances. This one driven to center. Regane will get to the spot for out number two. The umpires in this contest, it's Brett Kohler behind home plate calling balls and strikes. J.B. Torres is at first base. Keith Peterson at second. John Grabowski at third. And it's, it's for all the marbles, so we got six of them out there. Russ Lundquist is down the left field line, and Will Bowers, the crew chief, is down the right field side. Two away for Eli Frank. Big body up there swinging a big stick. Frank's going. Frank's got big numbers. He's a 424 hitter. He's hit 13 homers, driven in 69 runs. Those are second to scoring as far as eye-popping stats. He's slugged 724 and has an OPS of 1228. Skolan's a big dude from Bayport, Wisconsin, which is just north of Green Bay. He was also a really good football player at Bayport. Frank, 6 for 21 in the tournament with a homer and four RBIs. Ripped, foul back into the netting. He hit a big two-run home run against Birmingham Southern two days ago to tie the game and enabled Skolan to walk off the darlings of the tournament and send them back to Birmingham Southern where there is no school anymore. Two and two to Frank. Calvary is a veteran, pitched in 14 games last year as a junior, went two and two with a save. Frank launches it out of play. Should mention we sh showed you the men in blue, the six guys out there. There's also replay here at the baseball championships. Each coach in each dugout gets two replay challenges. If you win the challenge, you keep it. And from the eighth inning on, replay challenges are initiated by the umpire and crew. They discuss things with the folks upstairs here. With the change in the schedule, both these pitching staffs have been taxed, and you got to think the coaches are going to plan B and how they plan to work the championship series. Boy, and Calvary's did not want to do that. Now, hold on. No free base. Frank got... Uh, you know, he's a big kid. I think the ball suffered more injury than Eli. Did it hit the bat? I think it hit the bat. Yep, it did. Wow. Eli tried to get out of the way, and it hit just above the handle. So, foul ball, 2-2. Two -two. Now it's full. Reese inside, ball four. Now Frank gets the free pass. He's aboard for Kootway, the designated hitter. Kootway 
at four RBIs in a big win for Whitewater against Salve Regina. That was a, he was a key offensive star in the 7-4 win in an elimination game for Whitewater yesterday. Adam bounces that one off himself. On the year, Kudo is a 299 hitter. Four homers, 12 RBIs. You say, what's he doing hitting cleanup with all this thunder in the lineup? Well, he got hurt on the Whitewater trip to Florida early in the year at the third game. He had surgery, and he has bounced back. And is a factor now as they play in June. Count is even on Kootway. Kootway the leading hitter for the Warhawks here, nine for 21 with five RBIs. Now back to being healthy, contributing, feeling good at the plate. That one gets away. A wild pitch will send Frank down to second base. So man in scoring position here, two away in the top of the first inning. Just the second wild pitch of the year for Calvary's in 14 appearances. And getting back to the pitching being taxed. Pete Egbert, coach for Misericordia, he's used eight pitchers and going four and one. Launch to left, Cummins going back on the track. Is there room? Nope, it's out of here. A two-run shot for Adam Kootway. You talked about thunder. Boom. Top of the first. Whitewater on the board first. Fifth home run for Kootway. His second of the tournament. Or excuse me, his first of the tournament. His sixth and seventh RBI of the tournament. Wind's not a factor. That was all Kootway. The ball kept carrying out the left. And Cummins, who took a home run away yesterday, just ran out of room and had to watch it sail over the fence as Whitewater takes the early lead. This is what this powerful Whitewater Warhawk club can do. They can bomb you. They can get runs and bunches. Now Danny Hopper. They've hit 73 home runs this year in 55 games. Two and oh. And they average 10 runs a game. Scored 34 in five games here. That includes getting shut out the other night, 2 nothing, and a masterful performance by Sean Mulligan of Salve Regina. Hopper 2-0. Bollinger went out to have a word with this pitcher. Make it 3-0. And lost him. Free pass. Inning continues here for the Warhawks. And the first walk cost Calvary's a run, preceded the home run by Kootway. And this guy, even though he hits in the sixth hole, pretty good hitter. Yeah, Andy Thies, sophomore infielder. Thies, a 367, 56 hitter on the year, has 67 RBIs and 13 home runs. In there for a strike. Whitewater is the champs of the Wisconsin Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. They win for the 15th time under John Bowden Lynch. That went in the dirt. Bollinger suffocating it. One and one to Thies. Whitewater 44 and 10 on the year. Here's a record of 42 and 10.
Hopper the lead at first. Trying to time the pitcher. One and two to Thies. Calvary's deliberate and fouled off by Andy. This is Whitewater's eighth appearance at the College World Series. They won titles in 2005 and 2014. They haven't been in the College World Series since 2016, so they have gone through a bit of a drought. Actually, were picked to finish third in the WIAC before the season started. Two and two. That 14 team when they won the baseball title. The Whitewater football team also won a national title. Men's basketball won the national title as well. It was the trifecta that year in 14 at Wisconsin Whitewater. First and only time. An institution won all three in those sports in an academic year in any division. A lot of trophies in the case back in Wisconsin. Count is full. Off and running here will be Hopper. Bouncing ball to the first base side. It's a foul ball. So everybody back to their stations. There was an article in the New York Times when that happened in 2014 that the odds of winning those three sports in the same season were one in 38 million. Up in the air, right center, Regane will make the catch. Side retired, but early damage done by the Purple People from Whitewater. Adam Kukway getting into one and getting his team off to a perfect start here in Ohio. Edbert, Egbert, the head coach of Misericordia in his 17th season. His lineup card looks like this. McElhenney to lead it off, then Regane the center fielder. Bollinger the catcher. Marinak, the shortstop on the cleanup spot. He's a good one. Then Cummins the left fielder. San Filippo the first baseman. Van Horn is the designated hitter batting seventh. Bunn at second and Cordner at third. On the mound, they will face from Wisconsin Whitewater, the right-hander. We've seen plenty of them build the tournament. Max Hughesbow. Hughesbow is a 6'3 junior from Ripon, Wisconsin. Yeah, he's appeared three times. That's more than anybody else uh, pitching staff in the tournament. He's 1-0 with a 117 ERA in those three appearances. He's thrown seven and two-thirds innings, allowed seven hits and a run. Hasn't walked anybody. Struck out seven. Opponents have hit 250 against him. Strike one to McElhenney. We're trying to keep this track team off the bases. Yeah, they are stark contrast on this Whitewater squad. A little something for everybody if you enjoy different styles of baseball. Here in McElhenney makes him go. He's a 383 hitter, been hit by pitch 29 times this year. Got a 546 on base percentage, helped by those hit batters. Also walked 38 times, so he's almost been hit as much as he's walked, <laughs> and he's only struck out 15 times. Yeah, he handles the bat so well, and then a pest on the bases when he gets there. Got a piece of that one. So stays alive here at one and two. Again, this team has stolen 155 bases in 40 or 52 games. 
Pokes it to short. Frazier going to get there. And they retire McElhenney. One away here in the bottom half of the first inning. Here's the defense for the Warhawks. Skolin in left, McVay in center, Payton in right. Then you've got Hopper, Frazier, Thies, and Frank on the infield. Holland, really good-looking freshman catcher for the righty Hughes bow. Here's Regane, the center fielder now for the Cougars. Strike one. Regane hitting 275 on the year. We got five extra base hits. 20 RBIs. He really handles the bat well. Center field coming on McVay. Diving stab. He got it. Full extension. And then showed it for out number two. Freshman from Mineral Point, Wisconsin has played well defensively in this tournament. He's had a number of diving grabs. This one off the bat gets the second out for the first inning. Snow cone, ladies and gentlemen. Good jump by McVay, however, to help him make that play. Two away. Brock Bollinger, the catcher. Snow cone would be good tonight. It is a warm and humid night here in Ohio. Just like they said it would. I mean, it's the summer kind of feel of the day. 81 degrees here at first pitch. That's very pleasant. Yeah, the forecast it determined and the NCAA has the, uh, the option to juggle things around based on the forecast. And tomorrow doesn't look so promising. Tonight, beautiful night for baseball. I'm sure they conferred with both coaches before making the decision late last night to move the Wednesday game to tonight. This is a scheduled off day. One and two to Bollinger. And since both coaches have seen their teams go four and one and come through the loser's bracket to get here, they're in the same predicament pitching wise. On the appeal, Holland looked down and thought he had strike three, but Bollinger gets another crack at it. Two and two. Hughesbow back to work. This one hit in the gap. Long run. And it'll bounce off the wall in left center. A double for the Cougars catcher. Bollinger's team leading 17th double of the year. Talking about Allen, a good looking catcher. This guy is too. He's a junior hitting 344, and he's had a good turn. So Whitewater did their damage with two away. Misericordia trying to match him. Here's Maranac, the shortstop. Connor Maranac's an All American, both as a shortstop and as a pitcher. Strike one. A 354 hitter leads the team with 13 homers, 70 RBIs. And he's really the only real power hitter in their lineup. Count even at one and one. They're next four for 18 in Eastlick with a couple RBIs. Also started the game. Gets this one a good jolt, but it'll hang in the thick air for McVay. Side retired. A base hit, a runner, but nothing across for the Cougars. We go to the second, 2-0 Whitewater. Time to play. Get to know your Cougars. Ms. Recordia. See the students there. It's the number they had in 2022. They're from Dallas, Pennsylvania. 
part of the MAC Freedom Conference. First finals appearance. They were in this event in Cedar Rapids a year ago, also in 2018. Went one and two last year in Cedar Rapids. They're four and one here. The school was founded 100 years ago by the Catholic Sisters of Mercy. Here's Sam Payton. Sam was the hero in Whitewater's survival game against Birmingham Southern. Here it is on cue. The game was tied at 10 in the bottom of the ninth. Sam needed the first pitch that he saw to walk it off for Whitewater. That was his second home run of that game. Payton, five for 19 in the tournament with those two home runs and six RBIs. So he's like these Lake Ohio a great deal. Yeah, you bet. On the year, he's a 298 hitter with five homers. Three and one to Sam. McVeigh will be next, and then Frazier, seven, eight, nine for the Warhawks. And a free pass. With that, the Cougars' bullpen is now populated with arms starting to throw. Third walk and an inning plus a work for Calvary's. And again, by playing today, both these pitching staffs have a lot of arms that are tired. Yeah, that was the plan is that once you get down to the two final combatants, you want to give them that day of rest. That was supposed to be today the day of rest. Prompts a mound visit and gives the reliever in the bullpen an opportunity to get serious. And that is number seven? Yep. Number seven. seven is David McCurry, grad student. David's pitched once, thrown an inning in the tournament. Garrett Demeray is the assistant coach that is out there chatting with Calvaries. Talked with him before the contest this evening. He said it's a loose bunch. And I said, except when they take the field, it's all business. He goes, no, always loose. They're a bunch of goofballs. And if the nerves are uh, a little more tight here with this national championship on the line. Here's McVeigh. Good looking Warhawk center fielder. McVeigh, a 324 hitter in his freshman season. Nine home runs, 35 RBIs. Conveys four for 18 at Classic Park with a homer. Hit one of five home runs against Birmingham Southern. In there for a strike. One and two to McVeigh. Payton is lead at first. Again, pushed into the seats. Whitewater got to this point by taking two out of three from conference rival Wisconsin across in the Super Regional. They're going to come from behind there to win the last two games at home. Then they got here, won 11 to 3 over Randolph Macon Friday night, got shut out by Salve Virginia and Sean Mulligan Saturday night 2 0. Then Sunday in an elimination game with national people watching Birmingham Southern. Whitewater came from behind with four runs in the last two innings, six runs in the last three innings to win 11 to 10. Then they played two games yesterday, beat Salve Regina 5-2 and 7-4. Ball scoots away to the backstop, so Payton down to second on the wild pitch. We've seen this act before. That's mm -hmm. what happened in the first inning with two out Frank drew a walk, went to second in a wild pitch, and trotted in ahead of Adam Kuway. And that's going to be the last pitch Calvary throws. 
Yeah, here's Pete Egbert. He'll make the change. Even in mid count, McVeigh sitting at 3 2. And new arm coming on here in the top of the second inning of game one of the championship finals. Back with more. Out of the bullpen here in the top of the second inning for the Cougars, it's now the left-hander, David McCurry. He's a grad student out of Collegeville, Pennsylvania, a little left-hander, 5'9", 190 pounds. On the year, McCurry 1-0 with a 6.00 earned run average. This is his 11th appearance, his ninth out of the bullpen. In 18 innings, the left-hander is allowed 32 hits, 12 earned runs. He's walked 11, struck out 14. Opponents are hitting 372 against McCurry, who threw an inning earlier in the tournament about a hit and a run. Walked one, struck out one in his lone College World Series appearance thus far. Comes on with that man at second base, Sam Payton, and inherits the 3-2 count on McVeigh. McCurry was an all-Mac Freedom Conference pitcher a year ago when he started 13 games in Went seven and one with a 409 ERA. So McCurry. First pitch. 3-2 count to McVeigh. And he goes after it, bounces it to Marinak at short, up and throwing. And they get the out at first. On the play, Payton. Over to third. There's one away for Frazier, the shortstop. Played by Marinak and been distracted by the, the base runner, Payton, but he wasn't. Makes the throw on the run, and the infield comes in with a runner on third and one out here in the second inning. Frazier's the number nine hitter for Whitewater. Be alive. He's among the national leaders in sacrifice bunts. One and to Bennett. Holland, the catcher, the lead-up man, waits on deck. Frazier with nine sacrifice punts this season, most on the club. Got on the count here, the hitters count. It's a strike there, two and one. Payton, he's. Dancing and gyrating down the line at third, trying to distract McCurry, but the lefty is focused on home plate. And he's even now on Frazier, two and two. Whitewater got two in the first. They're looking for more here in the second. Skips away, Bollinger though. Kept it in the neighborhood. So now it's full count on the junior shortstop. Shallow right, McElhaney coming on, makes the grab. Payton was going nowhere, and there are two away. Well, Frazier puts the ball in play, which is what he's supposed to do, but he gets under it. And they're going to take a chance on throwing against the right fielder's arm on a ball that shallow. So two away, and it's up to Holland now. Struck out in his first A.B. that came against Calvaries. Now he'll face McCurry, the lefty. Upstairs. Oh. 
Help him inside, 2-0. Curry's one inning appearance against Lynchburg on Saturday it was the first time he'd pitched since May 3rd. It's a big at bat here for Holland to try to get that run across and from a Curry and the Cougars. Obviously they want to end it here. But the other part of the equation is Skolan waits on deck. Do not want to deal with him. Two and two to Holland. Nice pitch there. Get back even on the count. A strike away from getting out of the jam. Two two on the way. Strike three called. A Curry with a beauty. Leaves the runner stranded at third. Dugout fired up to greet the lefty. Middle of two, two nothing Whitewater. Well, school profile time for the guys in purple, Wisconsin Whitewater, almost 10,000 on campus. One of the biggest Division three schools you will find, maybe the biggest in the country. And of course, we mentioned earlier the baseball titles in 05 and 14. They both came in Appleton, Wisconsin. So they had a good contingent on hand when they won the whole shooting match those two seasons. Cummins leads it off, the left fielder. Reaches out and pokes it to Thies, who squares up and retires Cummins. One away. So a couple in the trophy case for John Bodelinch, but it's been a while since they've been to the tournament. Eight years. If you're going to go back 10 years to the glory years of 2014, they didn't build on that. Here's San Filippo now, the first baseman. Their conference in Wisconsin has been well represented. Stevens Point got to this tournament. Lacrosse got in. So Chris Schwartz has got her two of the last three years. Yeah. Lacrosse. Despite Mother Nature and the challenges she presents in the Badger State to play baseball. Pretty good teams, pretty good players come out of it. One and one to San Filippo. And a strike, one and two. Some pretty good coaches. I mean, I'll look at that, whether it be Schwartz or Bonewood. They all take Florida trips to get their players out of the gym and playing outdoors against real good competition for a week, 10 days every March. You come back from that, it's still cold, and you got to play conference <laughs> games. But, but you, your guys have played played ball, and they're doing the right thing. Pitchers' arms have been stretched out in warm weather, and they're ready to go again. They know how to they know how to do it because, as you say, the weather is pretty predictable. Frazier took a diving snag at it and couldn't glove it. it was tailing away, and Bennett took an overhand swipe. And San Filippo has a base hit. Jason's had a nice tournament. He's now six for 16 for the Cougars. Van Horn's had a real nice tournament. He's five for 10, the leading hitter for Misericordia here in Eastlake. He plugged him into the DH spot, and they can't rip him away. He has produced. Strike one to number 38. His fourth start as the DH. Did not play early in the tournament. But he has taken advantage of his opportunity. First base runner at first for this team, which likes to steal bases. I asked uh, Pete Egbert and his staff, I said, we all know your style. It, do you recruit guys 
that fit your style, or can you recruit a baseball player and teach it? And the answer was a little both. Runner goes, and it's a base hit to right. San Filippo heading to third. Andrew Van Horn, the freshman, delivers again for the Cougars. I don't think it was a hit and run, but he had a good jump at San Filippo. And Van Horn turns in this one and rips it into right. Van Filippo off of the pitch easily gets over to third. They pulled him up there. So now Gabe Bunn will be the hitter. Signs being flashed from Pete Edberg in the third base coaching box. Bunn just one for 12 in the tournament. A 258 hitter on the year. Bunn's only got four extra base hits. Driven in 22 runs. Checking to see if there's a play that's on, and you always got to be alive for a play on against Ms. Ricordia. They are not afraid to do anything at any time. They will pressure the defense all the time. One and one to Gabe Bunn. The one thing Pete and his guys did say about recruiting players is that they said we like the little dudes. <laughs> they love the scrappy dudes because normally the as they call them the little dudes they already have that DNA in them to play like a misericordia cougar well they're I mean they're like I used to call Ron Gardner's team Minnesota piranhas or I think Ozzie Gian called them that <laughs> yeah that's, that's perfect isn't it yeah it is with this team both physically but the way they play I mean, they got to recruit kids that are going to play to this. They certainly teach base running skills, to be sure. They know what they're doing. Give Pete Egbert a lot of credit. 17th year in Misericordia, 22nd year overall. Won over 600 games. Said the little dudes. He was saying that you know, the little dudes, they have to overcome a lot of stuff, so... They already kind of have that where they know how to bunt. They know how to steal a base. Makes their job easier. The other guys, they can teach that. One and two to Gabe Bunn. Deep in the hole, past Frazier. It's a base hit, it's a run in, and it's two to one. Bunn breaks through. Yeah, he was due. That ball just out of the reach of the shortstop, Frazier. With the play in front of him, Van Horn holds up at second. Van Horn hooks it between short and third. And Ms. Ricordia has had the lead with one out here in the second. When Bunn stepped to the plate, Cade Hansen, a right-hander, went down to the Whitewater bullpen. He's starting to get loose. And here comes a visit to the mound from Peyton Schneider, the pitching coach. Peyton, along with Armando Hernandez, Mark Fuller was talking to him before the contest, Zach Bayrider, and Thomas Clawwitter, the claw. I, I've never heard him called Thomas until the I PA know. guy here. I know. Claw. Sh showing the claw respect, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> getting the claw, a cup of coffee in the big leagues. He's a very successful girls' high school basketball coach in Janesville, Wisconsin. He's been on Bonelich's staff for the last four or five years. There's Hansen, who we have seen twice in this series. He's one of the Hansen brothers, not not the hockey not, guys. Yeah, not the musical group. But there are twins. There are two Hansons, twin brothers. Cade's warming up. Hughes bow. Conversation over. Owen Cordner, the hitter, with two aboard. And it's low for ball one. Throw it on the second. And we'll try to get Van Horn napping. Corner, another one of those guys that handles the bat well. He's a 241 hitter with just four extra base hits and 22 RBIs. 
He's four for 13 here with three RBIs in Eastlake. Center field McVeigh has his spot. Catches Ben Horn. He took a few steps and then going to see where the throw went. And giddy up right back to second base. Two away. And now McElhaney. You can see Van Horn went back and tagged and then thought better of advancing on a fly ball to medium deep center field. Watches head coach the whole way for instructions. Now back to the top of the order and McElhaney. They got this tough pesky hitter to ground out in his first A.B. Garrett's a 383 hitter. 29 RBIs. He lined a home run over the right field fence here. Only had two homers this season. He showed he could do it. And kind of surprised everybody. One and one. Reach base in 46 of 47 games. That's amazing. 21 multi-hit games. Brad Student. One and one on the way. Nice pitch from Hughes Bow. One and two. Trying to wiggle out of this jam is number 28 and keep the lead intact for Whitewater. McElhaney pokes it. Just beyond that Whitewater bullpen area. So it stays at one and two. McElhaney out of Essex, Maryland. Warners get their lead. McElhaney shoots it past these. This game is tied. Well hit ball. Just avoided the diving second baseman, went into center. And Van Horn scores easily, running with two out. Both those guys with good secondary leads. And Bun ends up on third. McElhenney has his 30th RBI of the season. His sixth of the tournament, and we are tied. And B heads up with real speed on the bases. Oh yeah, and John Vodolinch. See if he makes a change or just wants to discuss. He's, nope, he's he wants to make, make a change. change. Yep. So early exits for both of these pitchers. We step aside in East Lake, Ohio. Game tied at two here. Well, the aforementioned Cade Hansen, the right-hander, takes over here for Wisconsin Whitewater. He inherits a pair of runners at first and third and two away. Hansen's a freshman from New Braunfels, Texas. Six-footer. We've seen him before. Both these, we're going to probably say that a lot. <laughs> Hansen on for the third time in the tournament. This is his fifth day of the tournament, so both he and Usbo are going to pitch a lot in five days. In the tournament, Hanson appeared. He's thrown three and a third innings, allowed six hits and six runs. He's walked three in his appearances, but has a ERA of 10 and 80 on the year. He's done a lot better than that. But he gets the call here in a tough spot. And Vodenwich cautioned both battery members to be aware of McElhenney at first and Cordner at third and that they could have a play on. Kane Hansen on the year 4 0 with a 436 earned run average. This is his 14th appearance, 13th out of the bullpen. In 33 innings, Hansen's allowed 35 hits, 16 earned runs. He's walked seven, struck out 32. 
Opponents have hit 267 against the Texans. And his brother Wyatt, his twin brother Wyatt, is an outfielder. Number 14 on this Whitewater squad as well. So Jack Reganay will step in. McElhenney, there he goes on the first pitch. No throw, though, from Holland. And that might have been the direction that Boone Lynch gave him to concede the base. That is the 16th stolen base in 17 tries here in Ohio. And that's what they do. We talked about the differing styles. You've seen it illustrated in the first two innings. Another point of discussion with Pete Egbert and company pregame. They said, yeah, pointing to the other dugout, the Whitewater dugout. Yeah, we played against teams like them before. Doesn't shake us up. They do what we do. We play our game. 0-2 on the way to Regane. Allen tried to frame it and get it. Runners now at second and third. You see McElhenney in your picture. There's Bund on the line at third. Ball scored it away. Regane, for a moment, almost tried to poke the bat at it. He handles the bat well, but he's wise to hold up there. Regane just two for 17 in the tournament. Hanson, the 2-2. Two -two. Runs the count full. Bollinger's on deck. Dangerous stick if he makes his way to the plate with the bases loaded. Little tapper. Hansen bobbles it. No play. And a run in as Bunn scores. The Cougars lead it 3-2. to two. And you never know unless you ask Hanson, but you got to think that that speed of the Cougars intimidated Hanson. He knew he had to make a play in a hurry. He dropped the ball. It'll be an error on the pitcher, I'm sure. They call that a hit. My goodness. Anyway, if it is a hit, it's an RBI. And most importantly, Ms. Ricordi has got the lead. The three-run second inning, runners on the corners with two guys that can run. Better, you've got to think they might be running here. Give Bollinger a chance at a two-run single thing, get Regané to second base. Bollinger. Runner goes from first. Regané, no throw again by Holland. Again, that shows you what Bonelich thinks about the Cougars running game. He's conceded the base to both McElhenney and Regane. And wanted to keep the runner at third at third. Laced, fair ball down the line and left. Two runs will score. Bollinger in the second with a two run double. And the explosion inning continues for the Cougars. Second double of the night for Bollinger is fifth and sixth RBIs of the tournament. He's really swung the bat well here. Hooks this one down into the corner past the third baseman. And we talked about the thunder of Whitewater. How about the Piranhas five run inning? They have got six hits in this inning. My partner will be selling Piranhas gear in the Misericordia bookstore. Yeah. On completion of the tournament. Here's Connor Marinak, the shortstop, ninth man to bat here in the second. Ball one. Marinak.
Our next, the All-American. 2-0. Oh. Hanson, the freshman, lifted right field. Payton will circle under it and make the catch. A five-burger for Misericordia in the bottom of the second inning. That's Whitewater head coach, Hall of Fame coach, John Bodelinch. Some milestones that he is hardly thinking about, but we can pass along. One more victory, he would tie the mark for all-time victories in the WIAC back in Wisconsin. Victories for a head coach. So two more wins, and he would be all alone at the top. Right now, trying to figure out how to get his team back in this one. Top of the third, lots of baseball left here in game one of the best of three series. Oh, it's the tie. Tom Lechner will coach your alma mater, Oshkosh. And boy, Lechner had her going, talk about Success that they've had at Whitewater. Oshkosh certainly had her going under Lecter. Another team that won some national titles back in the day. Stolen to lead it off here for the Warhawks. Then Frank and Kootway, 2 3 4. Cougars, that second inning, five runs on six base hits. Caught him off, but he's just too strong. Muscles it to left field for a base hit. That's going, can pull the ball, go the other way as he did there. He's just a good hitter. And he's the leadoff guy in a board here in the third as Whitewater finds themselves down three runs. So we've kind of seen in the first two innings what each team can do. Whitewater did it with the two-run bomb. In the first, we just saw the Cougars on display. Here's Eli Frank. Ball one to him. They need some length from McCurry. They actually need some zeros on the board as well. He has not pitched more than four innings all year. Again, pitched well last year. And received postseason accolades for it. Count is even on Frank. Two and one. Kootway, who hit the two-run home run in the first frame, waits on deck. Curry, long look at first. Now to the plate, three and one. Gets a strike there. I think Frank was crazy about that call. <laughs> In the box, and Curry shaking off a couple signs. Way outside. Free pass. Second time they have walked Frank tonight. The last time. Good way followed up with the two-run ding-dong. And here is Adam. In case you tuned in late, shame on you. But we got you covered too. Kootway got it all. Over the fence, Clemens uh, ran out of room out there. He mentioned earlier, he took one away from a Lynchburg hitter yesterday. 
A ball to Kootway, and now this is Bollinger. Tough. He's trying to settle his left-hander down. Yep. There's nobody in the bullpen for Misericordia. There is for Whitewater. I mean, both coaches, I think, had to go into this figure, and it's going to be a bullpen game. We talked about how both staffs have used a lot of pitchers to get here by coming through the loser's bracket. Runners get their lead at first and second. Kootway sitting 1-0. This one stays in the park. Caught by Regane for the first out. And now Danny Hopper. Bollinger, the catcher. He's kind of the, the straw that stirs the drink at Misericordia. He's the guy in charge. Just saw him out there giving instructions to the infield. Handles his pitching staff really well. He's also the, the guy who keeps the rest of them loose. This one will die, I think. It will. Regane picks it up and gets it in. But here comes the runner. Throw is in time. Got Skolin at home plate. What a relay by the Cougars. Well, I was going to say, if Bollinger's not the guy who's the captain out there, Marinak sure is, and he just made a heck of a relay throw. The guy at second, Skolin, doesn't make a good base running play. He did not read that well. It was, in fact, Frank almost ran up his back. You can see he's very hesitant and because of that. He's going to get thrown out at the plate. I don't think Marinak even knew until somebody yelled that Skolin was going to try to score, but he threw a... Laser shot to Bollinger, and Skolin nailed on the tag, second out of the inning. So we stay at 5-2 on the board. Thies the batter. Strike one. Got to tip your hat to Misericordia for making the play there. And Skolin, who's a wonderful hitter, made a base runner error, thrown out of the play. And wasn't sure to go, and that cost him valuable time. There's your two on base now. Frank at second, Hopper on first. Thies sitting 0-2. Regane gets there. Side retired. Whitewater threat extinguished with a big play at the plate. Middle of three, five, two, the score. Five, two, Misericordia. Pete Egbert squad with a big five spot in the bottom half of inning number two. Whitewater going to the bullpen once again. Their third pitcher of the evening is now the right-hander Logan Kottmeyer. He's a freshman from North Aurora, Illinois. First appearance in the tournament. This is ninth appearance of the season. He's 1-0 with a 146 earning. In 12 and a third innings, Kottmeyer's allowed six hits, two earned runs. He's walked nine, so command has been an issue to be sure. He's fanned eight in those 12 innings. Opponents have hit at 146 against the freshman right-hander. He replaces the freshman Cade Hansen. He replaced the starter Hughes Bow. Strike one to Joe Cummins. Cummins started off that second inning for Misericordia with a simple ground ball. After that is when the hits started piling up. any doubt this is going to be a bullpen game. The fact this is the third pitcher in three innings has answered it. Two one. Cummins lays off, but it's a strike two and two.
Pokes it. Hopper knocks it down and guns it across the diamond to get Cummins. One away for San Filippo. Jason started the second inning parade with a single. Fans through that pitch from Kottmeyer. This is Kottmeyer's first appearance since the regional against Cal Lutheran on May 18th. Left field Skolan coming on to make the catch. And there are two away. He threw two-thirds of an inning that day against Cal Uthren. Threw an inning against Crown in the opening game of that regional, and since then has not pitched. So in fact, those are only two appearances since May 3rd. The DH, Andrew Ben Horn, strike one. Make it strike two. But for a guy that's had control troubles though this year, he's come in and throw strikes. Yeah. Looking for a settle down inning here for the Warhawks. Van Horn singled. In the first. Sitting one and two here. Fair or foul? Foul ball. So says the right field umpire. Will Bowers. I think Will's just happy to get some work. <laughs> it's a custom we see every year in the championship series. You'll see it in Omaha in a few weeks, too. Yeah. But I'd say the baseline umpires are attached. Superfluous, wouldn't you? Uh, tell me what that word means, and then I'll let you know. Over the top. Oh, okay. Foul back. But the, the six umpires, up until the championship series here, the best of three, they... They rotate. So guys will work a game, and then two guys will take a break. If it means we'll get fewer video reviews by adding six umpires, I'm all in. <laughs> You're <favor>. all in. <laughs> two and two. No, it's a reward for guys who've done good work all year, the guys in blue. And then CWA gets the best here, and congratulations to all of them for getting the opportunity to work in the championship series. Fouled off. Pre-game, I was down on the field, and the umpires they were all getting their World Series photo op. Were you in it? I was not. Oh, okay. I was not. Two-two again. The Van Horn. He's hanging in there. You didn't photo mom the picture is. No. There might have been some angry fans from the teams that are no longer here that wanted to photo up. Kind of photo bomb, but no, big moment for them. They it's a long season, it's a long tournament, and now the fruits of everybody's labor. Van Horn down on strikes. Good job by Kottmeyer to go one, two, three for Whitewater and put a zero up in the bottom half of the third.
Curry was ready. First pitch to Sam Payton, and it's caught out there by Regane for out number one. Regane has been a very busy lad. That's his fifth put, up, put out. He's also got an assist on the play where Marinak's relay throw threw out scoring at the plate. Yeah, a lot of eights on our scorecards here tonight. Here's McVeigh, the center fielder. He goes after the first pitch. Marinak charges and just got the speedy McVeigh. Two away. And now Bennett Frazier. Marinak there he was a little bit of a hitch to make sure he had a good grip on the baseball and then of course with McVeigh flying it was a tad closer at first base than one would think. Bennett Frazier now with two away. One and one to the junior shortstop. Base hit. Frazier drops in. A two out single here in the fourth. Give a shot here to the top of the order for Whitewater. Holland, Skolin, Frank lurking. See what Holland can do here with two away. So far tonight, Aaron has struck out in two appearances. It's contact here and fouls it up and out of the ballpark. Both those strikeouts came against Calvary, so. One and one to Holland. Curry pours in a strike. Gets ahead one and two. Racing back. The second baseman Bunn to make the catch. Three and a half here in Ohio. It's 5-2. Misericordia over Whitewater. <laughs> the hardware, the national championship hardware, available for either Misericordia or Wisconsin Whitewater. A little backstory here, Bill. Our production team to get that beautiful arty shot there pregame had to borrow the hats because they, they weren't available in the gift shop. So, <laughs> but it took about a half hour to get it, you know, just right. And they didn't have nautical themes, so they weren't. Sure. No, yeah, not available. But you know, baseball players are superstitious, so they were getting a little put out that it was. You know, when am I even get my hat back? So whose hat did they borrow? I'm not allowed to divulge. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But but both teams were they were keeping an eye on the proceedings, making sure that the borrowed hats found their rightful owners. Gabe Bunn with a leadoff single here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Bunn's two for two. Yeah, drove in a run, but was hit back in the second when his recording a bunch five hits and scored five runs. There's a couple hats in that Cougars dugout that I would not want for that shot. A little gaming? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. If Tyler Leonard gets in the game, 
you'll see the ultimate gamey hat. Well, if he does, it's going to be quite a story. <laughs> he's, the team's not here. Bunt by Cordner. Sacrifice complete. Bun to second. Again, that's what Misericordia does. As we said yesterday, you see more bunts from them in one game than you'll see in a week or ten days of major league games. And now McElhaney. No, you remember Tyler Leonard's hat? I, oh, I definitely remember? do. Yeah, so just wait. I got the backstory on that. Here's McElhaney. Did, did you talk to Tyler before the game? I talked to players and coaches who told me about the Okay, hats. well, I'll, I'll wait until yeah. Tyler comes in. Yeah. It, Tyler is a relief pitcher for the, the uh, Misericordias, who's pitched very well in this tournament. McElhenney showed bunt and then took strike two. And Garrett says, yep, good call. He's got Bunn out at second base. Tottmeyer with a peek at him. And then up the middle, flag by Thies. Throw to first is in time. Nice play and not easy with that ball bouncing off the mound back there. In a way, McElhenney runs. The big hop off the, the hill. These guns him down, so a big second out here in the fourth. Now Regane. He drove in a run. It was that little chopper in front of the plate. That's when Cade Hansen was pitching. Cade couldn't find the handle. And a run scored, and the inning continued. He drops down a bunt here, and it's perfect. It is perfect! And it's 6-2, to two Cougars! That guy can really bunt. I mean, it's amazing. He's had 16 sacrifice bunts this year. We've seen it here. He caught Hopper playing back. Puts down a perfect bunt. He's bunting for a base hit there, and he gets it. It's a run-scoring single. Second RBI for the center fielder, Regnier. Again, what Misericordia does is unique in baseball these days. They've now had 11 sacrifice bunts in this tournament. 11 in this their sixth game. And there's a bunt single to drive in a run to give them a 6 2 lead. Never afraid to bunt. In that situation, never afraid to bunt 0-2. Again, it's just so unusual if you watch MLB games these days and, and for the last, what, five, ten years? Five years, anyway, since yeah. launch angles and exit velocities became parts of every telecast. 2-1 and one to Bollinger. And then around all these pesky hitters who know how to handle the bat at the plate, you mix in a guy like Bollinger who's got a little pop, Marinak behind him who's an All-American. And leads the team in home run. Yeah. So it's it's the right combination. It's the perfect recipe for what these, what would you call them, the Go-Go Cougars? The Piranhas. Piranhas. Yeah, if you got to get my brand down, right? hey, if I'm going to sell T-shirts yeah. back in, in <laughs> Dallas. <laughs> Whatever the, whatever the kids will mark it for you. Throw over, keeping an eye on Regane. Kottmeyer. Another throw. I did call them the Go-Go Cougars the other day, but I like Paradis better. But I think it I think it'd look better on a T-shirt. But we could put... No, go go cougars on the back. You need to incorporate a piranha with a cougar yeah, cat. Yeah. Left field, Skolin has to play it on a hop. Regane slams on the brakes after a big turn at second. So Bollinger dumps it in front of the left fielder. Third hit for the catcher, Bollinger. Two doubles and this single right here. Skolin thought about diving. And 
making the catch, but he does a nice job of keeping Regane at second base. And here is Marinak, who's due. He's four for 20 in the tournament without an extra base hit. I take that back, he has a triple, but he's been pretty sound at the stick. First pitch strike to Connor, who's nothing in two trips tonight with a couple of fly ball outs. Yeah, he was the leader in this team by a, a big margin in home runs and RBIs. One and one, Cougars now with 10 base hits here in the fourth inning. Nobody in the bullpen for Whitewater. Checked in time, two and one. Way outside, throw down to first. Ooh, Bollinger, is he okay? Trying to get back, he tripped over Eli Frank. And going to shake the cobwebs here and the dirt. Obviously, concern of the athletic trainer right now. Frank doesn't hold the ball, does he? So as far as. No. And he just playing, took a spill. Yeah. Bollinger, I'll tumble for you over a big body, a former football player in high school, Frank. Looking at the, you know, down around the kneecap there. Told you how Bollinger, he's kind of the, the, the ringleader of the goofiness. He's, he's got a smile on his face. <laughs> he's not running gingerly, shall we say. As I said, <laughs> the straw that stirs the drink. <laughs> Goofy crew, dubbed so by the coaches who have to deal with it every single day. But wouldn't have it any other way. Lost them with a free pass, so Marinak is aboard to load the bases with two away. And now Cummins will be the hitter. The lefty. Nothing for two tonight with a pair of ground ball outs. No. One and oh. And now the Warhawk bullpen has been activated. Tim Kotmeyer's only thrown an inning in two thirds since a month ago today. That one inside, 2-0. Kottmeyer had a great third inning when he came in, steadied the ship, 1-2-3 frame. In trouble here in the fourth. Really in trouble. The command issues that have bothered him all year are apparent as he gets tired here in the fourth. Now walk 10 hitters in 14 innings in his first collegiate year. Jackson Koenig and Saba Depore are throwing for Whitewater. That's Depore, right? Yep. That is. Again. Whitewater used all the big guns to get here. They started Cade Bennett on Friday. Barrett won against Randolph Macon. They brought back their All-American Michael Hilger on Saturday. He got beaten a pitcher's duel 2-0. And 
They come back with Jack Hagen. Got cupped around on Sunday against Birmingham Southern, but their bats came back to win the game. Hagen pitched again yesterday in a start. Options are limited here. On this Tuesday evening. That's ball four, and that's another run for the Cougars. Cummins with the free RBI on the free pass. Seven to Misericordia. And now San Filippo, base is still loaded. And the ball get away from that Whitewater bullpen, so. Now everybody ready. San Filippo, six for 17 in the tournament with four RBIs. Missing, ball one. Kottmeyer, 2-0. And, oh. and here comes John Bordelinch. Can't go any longer. That's six straight balls. And that's going to be the end of the night for the freshman. Pitcher number four coming in for Whitewater. Bases loaded situation and down seven to two. Goofballs. That's what the coaches call them, goofballs. Right on cue. Easy to have fun when you're up 7-2 in the fourth inning. New pitcher, fourth pitcher for Whitewater. They're going with the right-hander, Sava Dupour. On the year, Dupour 1-0 with a 2-13 ERA. This is his ninth appearance, eighth out of the bullpen. 12 and two-thirds innings, he's allowed 12 hits. He, too, has had control problems with 10 walks and seven strikeouts. Opponents have hit 250 against Saba Depor, who is a sophomore out of Glenview, Illinois. And Bodelich hopes he has more success throwing strikes than Kottmeyer did. And again, he inherits the bases loaded. He inherits a 2 nothing count on San Filippo. Two runs already in here in the fourth inning. And a whole bunch more out there available for the Cougars. So Dupour to San Filippo, 2-0. and 3-0. It's always a tough spot for a pitcher. Coming down in the count to be sure. Had to have it. Got it. Three and one. Didn't get it. Another bases loaded walk and another run in, eight to two. Third straight walk after three hits in the inning. And if Van Horn can hit the gap here. Good night. Well, Whitewater can swing the bats as we've been telling you, but boy, that'd be a pretty big deficit if Van Horn can split the outfielders. Ball one to Bill's point, the Birmingham Southern game. The Panthers led Whitewater 10 to five. Warhawks came back, tied it at 10, walked it off to win 11-10. Will it fall? It will! One run is in. Throw home, not in time, two more across. Cougars got 10 on the board against Whitewater. 
Well, he didn't split the outfielders, but he hits a line drive to center. McVay charged and made a decent throw. But with two outs, the runner's moving. And Cummins scores with a dive. And the big inning continues. The second five-run inning of the game for Misericordia. This is Gabe Bunn, who started this inning with a single and scored the first of these five runs. Ball one to Bunn. Tenth man to bat. A strike from Dupour. Four hits, all singles, three walks. One and two. Down on strikes. But 10 batters in the fourth inning to make it 10 2. Misericordia on top after four. Whitewater. Warhawks have their work cut out for them. Trailing by eight here in the top of the fifth inning. And Matt Skolin leads it off, strike one. Skolin one for two in this contest. Single in the third and then was thrown out on that great relay throw by the Cougars. David McCurry starts his fourth inning of work. He has pitched very well. Hasn't allowed a run, just three hits, walk one, struck out one. He's only thrown 40 pitches. Eli Frank will follow and then Cootway for the Warhawks. He plays two run homer. Gave Whitewater the early lead, but there's been 10 unanswered runs by the Cougars. Two and two on Skolan. Upstairs, Skolan's such a, a disciplined hitter. Just, you see the big deep breath and he's quiet in the batter's box. But then the violent swing. McCurry gets in on his fist there. And now back to work against Skolan. 3-2 on the way. And another foul ball. If you're joining us tonight, you're probably figuring, what the heck are we doing here? The schedule all tournament said today was a day off. Yeah, what are we doing here, Bill? We're watching <laughs> Lizard Recordia shock Whitewater with two five-run innings. Still one pokes the walk. But no, with a precarious, shall we say, weather forecast, ran predicted tomorrow here. Late last night, NCAA officials huddled with the coaches and decided to move the single game scheduled for Wednesday till the night. That's what we're doing here. The schedule will hold up Thursday when games two 
and if necessary, Game 3 of this championship series will be held at the home of the Lake County Captains in East Lake, Ohio. We talked about the nautical theme, and we never told people why it's nautical. But this is the home of the Midwest League affiliates of the Cleveland Guardians. Eli Frank, the batter, 1-0. It's this one a ton. And that ball is gone. Regadet and Cummins were closing, hoping it would stay in the park. It did not. And that's why you can't count out Whitewater. 14th homer of the year for the bulky Frank. Second of the tournament. And he gives that Whitewater bench a jolt. Again, they... They've hit now 74 home runs. And again, both these teams have shown how they got here. The muscle of Frank and the Warhawks. The speed of the pesky Cougars. On display still, in the National Championship Series. Still nobody out here in the fifth. Yeah, a pair of two-run ding-dongs now for the Warhawks. Here's Kuwe who hit the first one. Lines this one for a base hit. Going to get at least two out of it. Settles in with the double. And remember, Whitewater averages 10 runs a game. Averages 10 runs a game. Kootway continues his rehab. This bat continues to impress. Kootway now well over 300 on the year and is the hottest hitter for Whitewater here in Eastlake. He's now 11 for 23 in the tournament. Good to be healthy. Danny Hopper now trying to keep things rolling here in the top of the fifth. As a recording has started, their bullpen up. Ball one to Hopper, singled his last time up. Hopper thought he had an RBI single. But that's when Stolen was thrown out the plate. Goes the other way, pulled down by San Filippo, and a race to the bag. McCurry gets there. He's one away. Cootway down to third. So three to one on the put out there. One away for Andy Thies. Strike one. Both. Warhawk home runs came after the player in front of the guy who hit the bomb were walked. So instead of just a solo job, that's going to get another run in. Base hit the other way for Thies. It's 10 to 5. Seventh hit of the night for Whitewater. Goes the other way, dumps this one in front of Cummins. So three in for Whitewater. Cobbling together a rally here. He's third in the club in RBIs with 68. Pretty good run production out of the six hole in the order. Pretty good, huh? There's Payton who also has power that's been on display here in Ohio. In the dirt, Bollinger playing hockey goalie there. One and one. Another base hit. Paid in a bullet in the left. First and second with one away. Another 
another barrel for Whitewater. It's time for the number seven hitter, Payton, who's certainly enjoyed the home of the captains. As you can see, bullpen now throwing in earnest. Becky may be ready. And here comes Pete Egbert. Four hits in the inning so far for Whitewater. A couple of singles, a double, the home run. And that'll be it for McCurry. We'll step aside in Ohio. Game on once again. 10-5 game now, top of five. Now the Cougars back to the bullpen. Third pitcher of the night in. It's the right-hander, Aiden Paddock. Paddock on for the 11th time. He's 0-1 on the year with a 6.75 ERA, 13 in the third innings. He's allowed 17 hits, 10 earned runs. He's walked seven, struck out 13. Opponents have hit 304 against Paddock, who's a freshman from Harvey's Lake, Pennsylvania. And this battle of attrition continues as we see the second line pitchers of each bullpen because the the big guns have all been used up in the first four days of the tournament by going through the elimination round the coach is turning to seldom use pitchers in their bullpen McCurry gave him three good innings and then ran out of gas well, we're at the home of the captain so all hands on deck a boy Bob there you go Paddock will face Dominic McVeigh with two aboard for Whitewater and only one away. Way outside in his first pitch. This is Paddock's first tournament appearance. The Cougars have now used 10 pitchers in the tournament. Paddock and McCurry making, well, McCurry had pitched once before, so nine pitchers in the tournament. One and one against McVeigh. Got a piece of it. One and two. Frazier waits on deck. Pesky number nine hitter. He's at second, Payton at first. That was ugly. About a what, 55 foot uh, breaking pitch. Oof. Spike broke well in front of the play. Bounder had no chance. So now second and third are the runners. And McVay sitting 2 2. It's a strike, but Bollinger can't come up with it. So a run will score. And McVay hustles down to first. Well, the last two pitches. Well, that had a lot of movement out of it. Bollinger didn't know where it was when it got away from him. The runner from third was going to score, and he did. 
but it allows McVeigh to reach on the strikeout. And there's still only one out in the fifth inning with four runs in. And the top of the Whitewater order lurking after Frazier. And six now. Strike one to Frazier. So costly pitch. You had the strikeout, but you don't secure it. You don't get the out. Whitewater gets a run. Paddock all over the place here. That was his sixth wild pitch of the year, which is second most on the team. In the air left field, Cummins, the infielder. Marinak gets it, it's going to throw home, and it bounces away. The run scores. McVeigh thought about going to third. He'll get second. It's 10-7 to seven now. Well, that's aggressive base running down four runs. Marinette goes a long way to make this catch. And his momentum's carrying him to the track. He forces Marinette to make a heck of a play. And they win the gamble. Payton scores as the ball bounces away from Bollinger, allowing McVay to take second base. So the Warhawks, who got stung with a pair of five-run innings, answers here in the fifth with five. Now, Pete Egbert, a chat with home plate umpire Brett Kohler. I'm not sure what this would be about. No, I'm not. Well, we're going to have a review. Uh, the runner at the third. So they're pointing to the runner at the third. Maybe that he left early well, on the tag? Maybe. I didn't see that they appealed over there. Yeah. But that that may be what it is. I know you've been lobbying for our umpires to have a microphone so that not only the broadcast but the fans in the stands can hear when they render what they're challenging and then what the decision is. I have. Yeah. Maybe next year. I think that would be a real improvement for the college game. And so we would not have to be guessing. Guessing, right? yeah. I, I think you're probably right. They're, they pointed at third, so. Egbert, but, well, and let's see. Well, unless you get the shot of the Peyton at third. Right. This isn't going to tell you anything. Other than Marinak went a long way to make a catch and then has momentum going to the, uh, the the track. So, so this is what we have, we're showing you here is the two frames lined up at the same time and Payton is on the bag. John Bolinch right there telling him when to go. And so the foot is still in the bag. So if the umpire and crew sees both of these pieced together in that same sequence, that would tell you if, in fact, that is what they're looking at. Because there's no doubt he's safe at the play. Yeah, gets the hand in, I mean, ball the gets away. And here comes the decision. Yeah, that's, that's not a surprise. Maybe Pete Egbert
Cougars going with the lefty Matt Lanzendorfer here with two outs and five runs in in the top of the fifth. Well, you know they'd like to use Lanzendorfer late in the game, but now that it's back to a three-run game, Pete Egbert brings in his third-team All-American, who's been a stalwart for his club all year. Lanzendorfer 3-0 and in the year, his 19th appearance. He has eight saves. Left-hander made his first start earlier in the tournament. He's got a save and a no decision in the start. 37 and two-thirds innings. This left-hander's allowed 25 hits, six earned runs. He's walked 11, struck out 45. And he's tossed a couple of balls to Aaron Holland. Ninth man to bat here for Whitewater in the fifth. The opponents have hit just 187 against Lanzendorfer. Graduate student out of Collegeville, Pennsylvania. It's a strike call there, two and one. <laughs> Ripped, fair ball. Banging around that left field corner. Another run in for Whitewater. A six run frame as Holland with an RBI double, 10-8 now. Holland's been pretty quiet in this tournament. He hit the home run, which people remember, but aside from that, but here he turns on one, pulls it down the left field line, and all of a sudden the tying runs at the plate for the Warhawks after Holland's run scoring double. And eight, Matt Skolin's turn. Skolin started all of this with a walk and scored the first of the six. Lanzendorfer gets ahead 0-2. Lanzendorfer picked up a save against Pomona Pitzer on Friday. He started the game through three, through three innings in Pomona, three third innings against Lynchburg in his start. Just missed one and two. That was yesterday. So he is hardly fresh. Having thrown six in the third innings and allowed five hits and two runs in the tournament. Stolen lays off, two and two. Lanzendorfer threw 76 pitches yesterday. But he's been a star all year, and coach needs him here to get a semblance of order to this game. And now runs the count full. Ball four. Second time in this inning, Skolin has walked. The first one hurt because this guy stepping in hit a two run home run. Well, he said at the time, I think that hit energized the Whitewater dugout. It was certainly demoralized after his recording his second five run inning, put him down 10 to 2. One and oh. This is how this inning started with a two run blast. I mean, if he does it again here, a three run blast for the lead in the same inning. He's got some carry, but into the glove of Regane. Side finally retired. But 11 Warhawks. Come to the plate, put up six, and right back in it. Down just 10 8.
All right. Going to be one of these baseball games, huh? Bottom five, 10 eight here in game one of the best of three championship series. Well, again, I think this is what you get when you go off schedule and play a game a day early and with exhausted teams and depleted bullpens. I mean, there's a reason these guys hadn't pitched in the first four days of the tournament. Yep. Who's got the most left in the tank? Both teams on fumes, pitching-wise. Cordner starts it off here. Top of the order after McElhenney and Regan to follow. And Dupour, who came on to finally finish up that last inning, starts this one off with a strikeout. One away in the fifth. Much needed after the big inning. Now McElhaney. McElhaney says, this is what we do. They got to get back to playing their game after seeing Whitewater do what they do, and that's Put the ball all over the yard. But Whitewater could dearly use a shutdown inning. One and one to Garrett. How's that one? And it hits the press box. Knocked out our production crew down the way, Bill. You okay? As far as I know, I still have pictures. Just above them, I'm told. Bouncer, first base side, but foul. You guys doing a great job down the way. They're got their own suite, a captain's quarters theme suite. Four, the one two lifted in the air back behind second base these says I got it and does two away and the batter will be Reagan a we're gonna a couple of singles couple of RBIs couple of runs scored in on the grass down the way at third base. They learned the hard way. This guy bunts pretty well. He drove in a run last time with a two-out bunt. That was last inning. It's about a half hour ago, but it was last inning. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the reminder. One and one. Two poor. Trying to go one, two, three. Keep this a 10-8 ball game. The bats up there for a return engagement. A strike, one and two. Little roller first base side, Frank has it. Wins the race to the bag, just barely. But it's a 1-2-3 inning for Whitewater. Back to work on offense. Go the Warhawks, down Sixth inning now. 
and a 10-8 ball game as Kootway swings through the first offering from Lanzendorfer. One and one. Make it two and one. Lanzendorfer, the third team All-American, trying to settle his teammates down. Although McCurry pitched pretty well. He ran out of gas, to be sure. But he, he put up three zeros. And Whitewater got to him. And treated Paddock roughly. Well, Lanzendorfer, fresh innings to start here. Gets Kootway. Looking at strike three, one away. And now Danny Hopper. And Lanzendorfer had saves in both Super Regional games. And Ms. Ricordia beat Christopher Newport twice. Had a save on day one here with three innings of work against Pomona Pitzer. It's the matter, again, how tired his arm is after throwing 76 pitches yesterday in his first start of the season. 0-2, some barking from the Whitewater side of the stadium. The captains, class A affiliate of the Guardians. Guardians were at home down the road tonight in Cleveland against the Royals. The game's already done. <laughs> he started about 15 minutes before this one did. Hopper retired on a hopper, two down. Lots going on here just up the road in East Lake, Ohio. Engendorfer trying to get the first clean inning for a misericordia pitcher tonight. In the face, Andy Thies to try to get it. Strike one. Did not go around. One and one. This went into the night sky and out of the play. Lanzendorfer. He's hanging in there. Regane on his horse, gets there. There's the clean inning Misericordia needed. After being bombarded for six runs, a zero on the board to keep their lead intact at 10-8. Bottom of six, Misericordia with a 10 8 advantage so far in the got a game that is far from over. Saw some Cougar fans from Dallas, PA, and quick look at some Whitewater fans from Whitewater, which is 45 minutes from Madison. About the same from Milwaukee. Southeast Wisconsin. They've spent the week with Bob and I. <laughs> Fellow cheeseheads. And there's the Cougar fans. And there's the Poor's first pitch. You got Cougar fans at your hotel, right? I do. I had breakfast with a, a few of them. They were more than happy to have been able to extend their stay. Fouled off. 
Whitewater assistant coach Armando Hernandez. He's a, a high school teacher back home. I was chatting with him and said, I just had to make sure I got enough substitutes to take my classes because we're going to be here for the duration. In the air, right center, McVeigh cruises over to make the catch. And Bollinger retired. First time tonight he's been retired. Now Maranac, the shortstop. Walked and scored in that five-run fourth inning. Strike to Connor. Just missed. The poor wanted it two, a one and one. corner that time one and two Poor's retired the last five hitters after coming on and walking San Filippo and giving up a run scoring single to Van Horn out two and two make it three and two This is one for a base hit. Tough out indeed. First base hit for him tonight. Pretty quiet here though. Just five for 21 with only one extra base hit in the World Series. The Cougars will be happy to take that. It's a runner on with one away for Cummins, the left fielder. walked with the bases loaded in the fourth inning. And Marin act like everybody else in this club, not afraid to steal a base. He's 17 of 20 on the base pass. There he goes. Right on cue, and then Cummins pokes it through the hole on the left side that opened up. Hit and run, executed perfectly by Cummins. First baseman, Jason. And the Cougars, again, trying to establish what they do best. And that's pressure the defense. Steal bases, hit and run. Again, it's old, old school. But it's got him to the... National Championship Series, and they have a two-run lead looking for more here in the sixth. San Filippo's turn. He walked with the bases loaded. Looking to swing that bat here with two men aboard. Way outside. Rips that one, but out of play. One and one. Van Horn, the DH, waits on deck. He's swung a very consistent bat. Has two hits tonight. He's been their best hitter here. And 
Again, out of the zone, two and one. Average wide span horn's been the best in the league. Poor to short to second for one. The relay is in time for the double play. If they ever needed it, that was the time for Whitewater. And San Filippo frustrated that this. Top of seven here in East Lake, Ohio. 10-8 Misericordia in front of Wisconsin Whitewater here in game one in the best of three. Sam Payton leads it off and dumps it in the right field for a base hit. Bats back to work for the Warhawks who trail by two. Second hit of the night for Payton. His leadoff single brings the tying run at the plate. Whitewater trail 10 to 2 after the fourth inning. First pitch swinging as well. Foul territory. San Filippo runs out of room. We've lost the video board here at uh, Classic Park. Top the scoreboard. However, the scoreboard still signifies the score and the count and yeah. the line score. Let me see. Yeah. Gotta hit the reset button. We just can't see a picture of Dominic Rebe who stands in. Back in the day, kids, we used to bang the side of the TV and that would work bring it back to life, right? That worked for me. <laughs> 0-2. Fouled off. Frazier will follow McVeigh and then back to the top of this dangerous order with Holland, Skolan, Frank, Kootway. Hansendorfer trying to hold the fort here for Misericordia. 1-2. Ten hits now for the Warhawks. Thirteen for Misericordia. Strike three called. McVeigh not a fan. Lanzendorfer is one away. Job by Bollinger. Here's Frazier. Check this swing in, not in time. No, that's a strike. Yeah. The appeal went down to JB Torres, the first plate, the first base umpire. He didn't hesitate. Poked foul. Frazier singled in the fourth and drove in a run with a sack fly RBI in that six-run fifth inning. He's sitting 0-2 here. Lanzendorfer rings him up. Back-to-back -back K's for the lefty. Two away. Top of the order in Holland. Fouled off. 
Holland came up with a huge knock in that big fifth inning. Run producing double. And then the guys behind him kept on going. Also going is the runner, safe at second is Payton. Stolen base for him with two outs. First one for Whitewater tonight as they give Ms. Riccardi a taste of their own medicine. Whitewater has stolen eight bases in this tournament. They were nailed three times yesterday, though. Center field, Regane is there. Side retired. Stretch them out here in Ohio. Game one. Going the way of Misericordia at the moment. Up 10. Beautiful night for baseball. Can't argue that. The only issue was everybody was hoping this would be the day off to recharge and regroup and play game one on Wednesday. But here we are, moved up a day, and we're in the bottom of the seventh inning with Misericordia up 10-8 to eight in game number one. Yeah, two five-run innings in the second and in the fourth. Had two uh, eight runs, only to see Whitewater answer with six in the fifth. And, and Lanzendorfers come in to quiet the bats from Whitewater, and now they're going to have to ask Sava DePoor to continue his excellent bullpen work here in the seventh. Andrew Van Horn, the designated hitter, leading it off. 1-1 one, one to Van Horn. Make it 2-1. Two 2-1. To two so we'll be back with you on Thursday as planned. 11 a.m. Eastern time for the first pitch of game number two. For the folks back in Wisconsin, that'll be 10 a.m. So start to uh, plan your excuse for the boss at work on why you can't be there right away. 2-2 two -two pitch. And Horn, see if it drops. Nope. But they had him played perfectly. Shallow in center to get Van Horn out. Now Gabe Bunn. A couple of singles for Bunn tonight. Scored both times. And Gim, uh, Bunn had been quiet. Came into this game just one for 12. So he's been a pleasant surprise for the Cougars. Hitting on the eight hole. Yes, yesterday, one of the games... He hit into two double plays. Yep. But bouncing back nicely here in the most, most important game in Misericordia history. Never played for the title until now, 2024. Two and one. The middle. Oh, it hit Dupour on the behind. He won't make a play. Looked like it hit him right in the wallet. Unacknowledged. Cheers from his teammates. Say, tough break for the pitcher. Yeah. Have a bruise tomorrow. Corner who handles the bat really well. Drops it down and Frank's gonna let it roll foul. You say one five bump with one out? Well, that's what Misericordia does. When I was talking with Egbert and the staff, talking about bunting and Talk about how they 
work on it in, in the spring and that when new guys come in and they try to bunt and if they're unsuccessful. It's this one down. Feel it and shovel to get Cordner. Moves Bun to second with two outs. Second sacrifice tonight, his 10th of the year. He's now had four sacrifices in the tournament, and he gets uh, Bun over to second base for the top of the order. McElhaney. You see Jen Bumlich discussing something with the point umpire. I am at a loss as to what this conversation is about. Same. Well, we're in the seventh inning, so he might want to challenge some. Maybe he's saying that he ran out of the baseline, but again, it's not an impact and throw up in a pitcher, but yeah, he's out of the baseline. So I guess. Bonelich is saying he ought to be called out and they send the runner back to first base. Yeah. And again, coaches get the challenge twice in the first seven innings and not after. So maybe Bonelich figures, I got a challenge to burn. And he did yeah. call him out. And they're going to say he was out. And we had this very play yesterday when a runner, and they don't even have to look at this. But for now, they're saying, and now Bolich is saying, doesn't the guy at second have to go back? Because, all right. So they're signaling out, which he was out on the, the sacrifice. Do you get it? Well, Bolich made his point, I guess. But, uh, but he's, you're right, when all is said and done, Sacrifice work. The runners at second. Yeah. There's two out. This is McElhenney. <laughs> and Dupour better be concerned about a real pesky hitter. Strike one. McElhenney's one for four tonight. A 383 hitter on the year. Eight for 24 in the tournament. Takes a rip. It fouls it off. And Dupour. Gets ahead 0-2. He leads the club in RBIs in this tournament with six. A big one out there at second and bun. If McElhaney can find a way. Set up on the outside. Warhawk fans going nuts, but I didn't think that pitch was no. close. No, that was, yeah. One, two. Up the middle, gonna fall for a base hit. Here comes Bunn. Throw is gonna come home, and it bounces around. McElhinney into second. He got the job done on a one-two pitch to make it 11 to eight. That's what he does. Doesn't hit the ball hard, but he slaps it into center. And the Piranhas pick up a big insurance <laughs> run. They get him on, they get him over, they get him in. Single off the pitcher, a sacrifice with one out, and then McElhenney serves this one into center field. He goes to second on the throw to the plate, and so it's a three-run lead. And now here's Regane. Whitewater bench had to shout out to Hopper at third to get in on the grass because they all know, they had to remind them, number one's up there. And he can bunt. He can handle the bat. Two bunt singles tonight. Two runs scored tonight. Two RBIs tonight. Bouncer right to Hopper. That's why they wanted him there on the infield grass. Side retired. Go to the eighth inning. Cougars add one more. Their lead now at three at 11 to eight.
to the eighth here in Ohio. Whitewater trailing 11 to eight. Skolin to lead it off, and then Frank and Kootway, big bats again for the Warhawks. And they will need them again. And they're calling foul ball that hit off the heel of Skola. He's going to walk it off. Dog barking a little bit. These are the guys Whitewater wants up there, down three runs. Skola, the All American outfielder, hitting 400 coming into this game. Frank has already hit a home run tonight. Frank's the leading hitter on this team. So these two guys have got things done for the Warhawks all year. To right, McElhenney falls down but makes the catch. Stolen saying, did he make the catch? Stolen obviously doesn't think he did. But nobody else on the field feels yeah. that way. Uh, second base umpire, Keith Peterson, is watching. He signaled. Well, he didn't exactly hustle out there to get a good view, although you got the, the guy down the line, I guess, with six umpires. It's his call. So it's an out, despite Skolin's objection. Catch and... Yeah, it looks like it's in there. Yeah. Going with was definitely a minority opinion. No snow cone, no ball rolling around. Just a little more excitement for the highlight reel. One away. Here's Eli Frank. And that's why you have umpires on the line, so he can make that call. That's right. You have to make another call. Yep. It falls. Throw to second is wild. All the way into the other corner. So Eli Frank hits a sky ball back behind first base. Bun trying to get it, slips. And then a wild throw back into the infield. Frank winds up at third. Well, that's a gift. I mean, Frank, the big power hitter, hits a pop-up. Bun falls down. And then McElhinney the airmails the, the throw. So it'll be a base hit and an E9. But the bottom line is Frank ends up at third with one out. The infield stays back as the Cougars are up by three runs. They're counting outs. Here's Kootway. Two-run homer. RBI double tonight. Opportunity for Whitewater to get that run back here. They gave away in the bottom of the seventh. Lanzendorf ahead, 0-2. It was Bun, San Filippo, and McElhenney who were all running towards that baseball. I think Bun had the best angle at it, though, and as you said, he slipped. This one will reach the seats. it over just porn strikes it. Ripped, base hit, another run in. They do get that run back, and it's 11 to 9. Third RBI of the night for Kootway. He had the home run back in the first. He's now got eight RBIs to tie Skolin for the tournament lead. And the tying run comes back to the plate in Hopper. That's why the crazy overthrow was crucial. If it just falls, you give Frank the single. An absolute gift from his recording. I mean, not catching the blue pit and then throwing the ball away. The Whitewater, they will take it. Here's Hopper. Represents the tying run here. 1-0. Hopper has 
Singleton walk on his scorecard tonight. Inside, two and one. Up in the air, Bun. Mer McElhaney calls Bun off, two away. And now it's up to Thies. Keep this inning going. He's drove in a run, one of those six in the fifth inning with a single. Other three times he's fallen out the center. This one on the infield. Who wants it? Pollinger. <laughs> Side retired. Whitewater gets a run back. Bottom of the eighth inning here in Ohio. Misericordia 11. Wisconsin Whitewater 9. Game one in the best of three national championship series. nine Cougars in front they would love to get some more pad before heading to the ninth inning especially the way Whitewater swings the sticks that is the mission here in the bottom of the eighth it'll be Bollinger Marinac and Cummins three four and five hitters in the misericordial lineup against Saba DePore who's pitched very well He's the fourth Whitewater pitcher, and he's thrown three and a third innings. Allowed but one run and five hits. Nine runs, 12 hits, no errors for Whitewater. 11 runs, 15 hits, two errors for Misericordia. And a wild one. There's a strike, two and one. Again, this game was supposed to be played tomorrow because of a bad weather forecast. They moved it up to today, and that's really forced coaches to use pitchers that have been back-end guys for most of this season. Yeah, could have really used today off. And both in planning, which you set up your pitching staff for this tournament, and in reality, after both teams came out of the loser's bracket to get to the championship series so they had to play the maximum five games and you've got exhausted bullpens and frontline starters hit him Bollinger will reach that hit on the back shoulder oh he's taking a beating yeah tripped over the bag <laughs> <laughs> got hurt this last time down there nah, he's a catcher he's used to it Still, you know, right in that top of the shoulder blade. Yeah, get the ice back. So we've seen this before. Pete Egbert calls everybody over, and, and I'm not really exaggerating. Everybody that's on the bases, on deck circle, coaches. And they talk about situations. A lot of times everybody knows what the situation is supposed to be and what it's going to be. And Pete does that just as a reminder. And Whitewater is going to have their own convo. Because they are aware that Misericordia has a situation brewing. So they want to get on the right and the same page. And they also know this is a key key spot of the game. As you say, Misericordia wants to add on 
Whitewater wants to stay within two, so a bloop and a blast tied the game. So Merrinack's, Merrinack's going to step in. Let me ask you this, Bill. When, if at all, do we see Merrinack on the mound? He, he first pitched as a starting pitcher, and he's very good on Saturday. It was game two. Does he come back on Thursday? I think you'll see him Thursday. But game first game, do you hold relieve? I mean, well, Valente's got two wins. I think you see Joe Valente in, this, in game two. Yeah. yeah. And that can also. And I think you'll see Michael Hilker, the All-American for Whitewater, in game two. And I think you're going to see a pitching change right here. John Bolich out to the mound, sitting for the bullpen. We'll return here, bottom of the eighth, 11-9 Cougars. Bill, my wishes have been answered. We have a mascot at the Division Three Baseball Championships. Yeah, that rarely happens. The that, Cougar made the trip. That's Archie McGraw. That's right. We talked about I Archie. I was going to say, we didn't implore that Archie made the trip, but <laughs> he's here without our imploring. <laughs> Good to see Archie could join us in Ohio. How nope. far is it from Philly to Cleveland? Yeah, I'll have to get the GPS out. You know who else is here? Logan Eisenbarth. We knew he was here, though. Yeah, we've seen him a lot. Logan on the year 2-1 with a 506 earned run average. He's pitched very well in a while. His 16th appearance, 15 of them have come out of the bullpen. He's had three saves in 21 and a third innings. Logan Bart, 17 hits allowed, 12 earned runs allowed. He's walked six, struck out 21. The opponents have hit 218 against Eisenbart, who's a sophomore out of Barrington, Illinois. He's on for the fourth time. Got two saves here. Pitched three in the third innings. And hasn't allowed a hit or a run. He's walked one and struck out three at Ohio. He faces Merrinack with a big insurance run down there at first to nobody out in the eighth. Runner goes. Throw. Bounces away. Going to get third now. Because the baseball pinballed into center field. Bollinger now at third base with nobody away. Wasn't a real good throw by Holland. This isn't a real good jump. Bollinger looks back like it's a hit and run. But he takes third on the air on the catcher. And now the infield's got to come in, you'd think. The All-American Merrinack at the plate. Let's in at first and third, back up the middle. And curious strategy to concede the run. That's a strike. Frank's in so far in the grass, it's like he thinks Merrinack's going to bunt. And again, when you play his record, you got to be ready for it. Yeah, you're flipping a coin. But this guy's got 70 RBIs. By far the team leader. One and two. Merrinack one for three tonight. Been pretty quiet here in Ohio, though. Five for 22 in the tournament. Upstairs. Evens the count at two and two. Now the infielders come in. They are not conceding the run. You got to cut down that guy if he tries to score on a ground ball. And Marinek needs to put the ball in play. This coach, I'm sure, reminding him of that. Not sure what Pete's talking the umpire about. But we're ready to go for a 2 2 pitch. And now it's full. Well, that was curious. Holland went to throw the ball back to Eisenbarth, and it dribbled away from him. And he, for just a split second, you'll see, he lost it. Yeah. That would have been a curious way 
to give up a run. But it's Eisenbarth. Got a bear down here, 3-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Got Marinak for strikeout, number one, and out number one here in the eighth. Enormous strikeout. And now he'll face Joe Cummins, left-handed hitter. Infield stays in for Whitewater. in the air, back behind short, converging, and McVeigh catches it and gets it in. Two away. Oh, nice job by Arzenbart to get the strikeout and then the first pitch pop-up. So now it's up to San Filippo to try to get this important run in. This wasn't far enough for Bollinger to even think about it. trying to score through the throw, and it was a strong one by McVeigh. Infield now goes back to conventional depth. And San Filippo needs a two on RBI. Knocked down by Hopper, but that's all he'll do. But then he throws it away. The run is in. San Filippo was going to beat it out. He'll get second base. It's 12 to 9. Hopper did a great job to knock it down, but then could not find the handle. Well, he did the tough part. That ball was smoked. Here it is again. He makes the stop, gets to his feet, and he can't finish the play. And then makes a real errant throw, which allows San Filippo to take an extra base. So. The bottom line is they got the runner in from third base, and it's a three-run game. And Misericordia matches Whitewater's run in the top of the eighth with one of their own here in the bottom of the eighth. They're going to put Van Horn on. Won't pitch to him. They'll pitch to Bunn instead. They call it a hit and an error. So San Filippo gets an infield hit and an RBI, and then goes to second on the air five. You know, once Hopper couldn't make the exchange cleanly, the run was going to score, San Filippo was going to get first. We'll see if the error part of all that comes back to bite them. You got first and second yeah. with two away. Daminger, Owen Daminger, is now pinch running. We've for Van Horn at first. We've seen him in this role for the last five days. And now Gabe Bunn. Bunn having a big night. Got three hits and an RBI. And three runs scored. Each time he singled, it meant something. Trying to really inflict some more pain here in the eighth. One and one. There's nobody in the bullpen for Misericordia. Lanzendorfer has pitched so well, and he'll be asked to get the last three outs, apparently. One and two on Gabe Bunn. Eisenbarth. Inside, two and two. There's no pitch clock on display here. We are told the third base umpire keeps it. I think he might have forgot to turn the switch on <laughs> before that first pit, last pitch from Eisenbarth. Ball gets away from Holland. 
Second and third now. Bun just stood there and watched the ball careen off of Holland's glove. Holland going to walk it back out to Eisenberg. I don't know if that's a cross-up. He never squeezed it. Yeah, I guess I think that's Holland wants to make sure they got they're on the same page as far as signal. And for as much as the, you, I guess I've talked about the backline pitching we've seen, here we are at crunch time, and both teams have their closers in. Lassen, Lenzendorf, third-team All-American relief pitcher, pitched awfully well in Eisenbart. It's been the guy that Goldenlich has gone to in this tournament. Big pitch here, 3-2. Walked them. Bases are loaded with Cougars. And now Cordner, the number nine hitter. Vodalich going to go to the right-hander now. So Eisenbarth won't finish the bottom of the eighth. Pitcher number six coming on for the Warhawks here in the bottom of the eighth. Turning to the freshman left-handed pitcher, Jackson Koenig, to try to stop it right here with the bases loaded and two down. Sixth pitcher of the night used by John Bomelich. Koenig's without a decision in the 7.27 ERA this year. Cordner takes ball one. Koenig on for the seventh time. Pitched just eight and two-thirds innings, about 10 hits and seven earned runs. Walked three, struck out nine. Opponents have hit 278 against the freshman from Blaine, Minnesota. Owen up the middle, slow roller. It's knocked down and shovel tossed to second. Nice play. Peace and Frazier avoiding more disaster. We go to the ninth inning. Cougars lead the Warhawks 12-9. Archie looks happy. Oh, oh, he's got all the girls coming around. Yeah. I say Archie must be exhausted after that trip because <laughs> his team's three outs away from winning game one of the championship series, and he's not even on his feet. Marinak at short. First man retired. Payton, one away. Well, Lanzendorf really done a nice job. He's now gone three and two-thirds innings in a crazy game and brought order to win. It's a lot four hits in the the run was unearned. He struck out three. Walked this one. He gets the leadoff hitter here in the ninth. In fact, he's had the leadoff hitter in all but one inning since he came on in the fifth. McVeigh the hitter. Strike one. And Mattis Sr., third team All American. Count even, one and one. Picked up a save. Out last Friday, the first day of this tournament, offered to start his first game yesterday. Went three and a third innings. Got the ball here again today when all heck was breaking loose. And he has quieted the Whitewater bats since the fifth inning. Came in, in the midst of that six run rally for Oiwater. One two pitch. Up in the air. Shallow right center. Called and calling off Regane was McElhenney to make the catch. Regane, his heart's kind of skipped a beat for a second. 
Well, McElhinney kind of turns everybody in his way to an adventure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Whitewater down to their last out. So two away. Frazier the hitter. We apologize. We temporarily lost our center field camera angle that you're used to seeing. Tapper foul. Benzendorf were pouring in the strikes. Needs two more. Needs one more. Left-hander from Pittston, Pennsylvania. Feeling it right now. One and two. Lifted foul. And Lanzendorfer knows it. The rest of the Cougars dugout knows it. They want to end it here because Holland, Skolan, Frank, all those big bats, they don't want to see them. They also want to go in the off day with a win. Is Ricordi looking for their first ever national championship? Bouncing ball, third base side, gobbled up by Cordner, cross the diamond. And it's a final in game one. What a game one it was. 12-9 Cougars over Wisconsin Whitewater. 21 total runs, 27 total hits. And pitchers galore all taking the mound in this one. But Lanzendorfer, the star of the mound, to end it. Well, again, he brought semblance of order to it. He's the third pitcher used by Ms. Ricordia, who saw Kutley hit a two-run homer for Whitewater in the first. But Ms. Ricordia ran their way into two five-run innings. They got five in the second, five in the fourth. It was 10 to two, only to see Whitewater club their way back in to the game with a six-run fifth. Then Lenzen order came in, only allowed one run the rest of the way and two hits. And the third-team All-American gets his first win to go with a save in the College World Series. Misericordia goes up 1-0 in the best of three series behind two RBIs from Garrett McElhenney, Jack Reguillet, and Andrew Van Horn. They out club Whitewater, and again, speed kills. The Cougars proved it as they silenced the bats over the last four innings of Whitewater. Nine runs for the Warhawks tonight. Not quite enough. We will all take a breather on Wednesday and be back with you on NCAA.com on Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. back in Wisconsin and the Central Time Zone for Game 2 between the Cougars and the Warhawks. For Bill Brophy and our entire crew, Bob Brainerd saying so long from East Lake, Ohio. You've been watching the 2024 NCAA Baseball Championships on NCAA.com.